I think we've all our members have questioned. Uh, I just want to thank the. Oops. I always forget you, Davis. He was in the chair. You know, Mr. Davis. You, you, I'll give you six minutes. Well, thank you, thank you. You sit in the chair, give the guy a break, and I said I wasn't going to give it back up, but you see who who actually gets the chair back, and then he forgets me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. Um, I've just used my extra minute too, Nick. Uh, but I do want to start with uh, with Mr. Calio and also um, give Mr. Baker and Mr. Rinaldi a chance to ask this. I know we touched on you, you've touched on the edges of the five to six billion dollar next gen investment that the GAO reported, but there's little confidence, as I think we've seen and heard through testimony in this hearing, uh, among the stakeholders and FAA's ability to implement next gen. Where is that disconnect and what return on investment is the taxpayer seeing uh, from this process? And Mr. Callio, if you could just even expand a little bit more on, on what you've already talked about on that issue, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Congressman Davis, there are, uh, as Captain Moe pointed out, there are benefits that already are being realized um, in certain areas. We've put in place procedures uh, where planes can get in quicker and take off faster. Um, more clearly needs to be done, though. The return on investment will come, I think, when the, or we think, when the procedures or the business processes that Captain Moak has referenced and Governor Angler addressed are put in place. Our problem is the system currently, as it's, as it's structured and operated, does not have, um, if you were make the question came from, I can't remember which member, if you were making a capital expenditure as a business, you would look at your return on investment, your return on capital, you would have your process laid out over long term, you would make, you know, you would approach it probably incrementally, which has not always happened with the FAA. You need those kind of business-like private sector decisions. That's not a general knock on government. It's just that we have not been doing that, and we've seen the embrace of technologies too often that weren't ready, the standards set the wrong ways, and with very little input from the, the stakeholders most affected. Thank you, Mr. Callio. Mr. Rinaldi? Now, I think we have to look at some of the successes we do have. And although the, the FAA and maybe even Congress doesn't even want to talk about uh, transforming our, uh, our platforms, our in route modernization platforms and our terminal platforms, are the first things. They're the chassis in which we're going to attach a lot of the next gen technology to. Uh, we are making progress with that, and we, we should be done uh, with the in route, uh, it, what we would call ERAM. Uh, in 2015, and the terminal automation tower with stars replacement by 2018. Now you have those on, then you can actually start uh, attaching the technology and the ADSB uh, and uh, the SWIM, the information systems, and start bringing them uh, online. Um, you know, I, I, my frustration is that we're still the safest and most efficient, and we're working very hardly, very hard, and very collaboratively to modernize this system. And we're doing it piece by piece. We've, we've revamped the whole state of Texas airspace, basically. Uh, we did uh, what we call OAPM, optimizing the airspace uh, in Houston. Uh, it's a huge success. Uh, the airlines are seeing uh, uh, benefits from it, uh, you know, optimization of, of uh, departures and arrivals. We now rolled it out in North Texas also. Uh, Texas is a big state. Uh, it's big airspace, a lot of airplanes. So we did that. So now we have a playbook to move forward. It's not going to. It's not a flip, flip at a switch or a snap at the fingers. We still have to continue the legacy system and run it uh, as safe and efficiently as possible while we're doing this. All right, Mr. Baker. Yes. What we think about in general aviation aircraft, if it, if it makes sense, people adapt. And we think we think there's probably close to 80 or 90 percent of the people today using some type of a GPS to move around and, and navigate with, whether it be portable or panel mounted. People are starting to use the tablet, namely the iPad, in very significant ways to get weather and traffic in your cockpit at low altitudes. When there is a value and when you can see that you're getting something significantly better to fly the aircraft with, people adapt. And we're just asking for that to be looked at. What's the lowest possible cost to do that so we get the adaptation across the system? We're in favor of getting ADSB where it makes sense. If, if we get weather and traffic in the cockpit, we're going to be better off. Thank you. Um, Mr. Scoville. In your testimony, you raise the issue of safely integrating uh, UAS into our airspace. Many advanced economies from Australia to Canada to even France have successfully integrated small UAVs into their airspace. Canada has issued over 1,500 commercial approvals compared to the FAA's seven. Uh, I mean, I think that shows that the risk 
uh, risk-based small UAS rules they, that actually we need to unlock what I think could be rapid job creation. And the FAA partners with its counterpart foreign agencies in countless ways. Has the FAA reviewed other countries' actions on small UAS and leveraged those best practices in preparing the small UAS rules? We have done work. My office has done work, sir, on, on uh, FAA's efforts to safely integrate UASs into our airspace. Um, I don't know um, as whether we have looked at FAA's review of other nations' procedures and practices. I, I'd be happy to get back to you on that. Would you please do that? I mean, in my district, it's a very rural district. Uh, right. we, we need to, to make sure we have some idea of what type of possible commercial expansion in UAS technology we, we can utilize here in this country. And I, I think when you look at a 1,500 commercial approvals in Canada versus seven here, uh, there might be something to be learned in, in what they've seen and, and how they've integrated that into our our airspace or their airspace. So with that, I, I thank you for your question. I thank you for your responses and uh, I yield back.